Hey guys, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. I hope all of you are aware of this live class timetable for RBI, SEBI, and NABARD as well as our mobile application. So let's quickly begin with the question number one. So which state witnessed the highest decline in under five mortality rates in 2020 as per the sample registration system statistical report of 2020? So here, what is the right answer? The right answer is option D, both A and B. So both Uttar Pradesh and Karnataka have witnessed the same level of decline in their under five mortality rates. So what this report exactly is, and why are we discussing it? What is its importance? Let's discuss all of these questions. First of all, you all need to focus on this word: sample registration survey and the civil registration system. you must have heard reports released by using these systems so what are these systems and is it actually an organization which is releasing the reports so here guys you need to clarify this fact in your mind that these are the data sources which are used by the office of the registrar general and census commissioner of india to collate the data on specific parameters and then a final report is prepared and released okay so you can see not only the sample registration or civil registration but this organization has many data sources like your linguistic survey of india drop in articles population projections etc etc so these are the sources which this office of the registrar general uses to provide the data on a specific parameter like we are discussing about the deaths okay the mortality among the children infants neonatal as well as the under 5 mortality in this particular report i hope this much is clear now on that note you have to tell me who is the present registrar general and censor census commissioner of india and remember that this organization comes under the ministry of home affairs now as far as this report is concerned so i have already told you that it talks about the mortality rate among children and uh, it has undertaken three parameters infant mortality rate then under 5 mortality rate and your neonatal mortality rate all of these belong to the children uh, the newborn children theek hai and the infant children and the under 5 children so let's discuss the data now guys the under 5 mortality rate okay uh, the children who are dying before uh, attaining the age of 5 years so as per this report a good news is that the numbers have been declining across the parameters like under 5 neonatal and infant but it is still high okay so the government needs to work in order to reduce this number and we have been working in that area through various government schemes like indradhanush is there and uh, polio immunization is there so there are many kinds of uh, programs run by the government in order to protect the children from early death okay so as far as the under 5 mortality rate data is concerned 32 per 1000 live births is the under 5 mortality rate it means that out of the 1000 live per 32 children are uh, dying okay in 2020 theek hai this is under 5 mortality rate now on rural areas uh, under 5 mortality rate is 36 and guys this is urban area mortality rate okay in under 5 this is 21 per 1000 live per then in males you can see that it is lower in female females it is higher a bit higher than the males okay but uh, if you compare the urban and rural areas mortality rate then you can clearly see a stark difference here coming to the states which have the highest decline so it is uttar pradesh and karnataka both of them have witnessed a decline by 5 points okay so that is the data in my opinion which is important especially for your phase 1 preparation of rbi sebi and nabard okay now one more thing from your esi perspective of nabard grade a you need to prepare this data because this is a part of your current affairs and this is uh, until or unless a new report comes up in this regard this report is going to remain static for you okay so this is also important from that perspective okay until or unless we have a new census of 2021 we have 
the census of 2011 as the latest and the static portion and we have to prepare it so you have to see this news from that lens that lens okay now coming to the infant mortality rate so 28 per thousand live births is the imr of india and we are talking about it as the national average and national averages are always important okay and it has reduced from 30 in 2019. The percentage of reduction is 6.7%. Urban areas, IMR is 19. Rural areas, the IMR is 31. Males, may it is 28. And in females, it is 28. So there is no disparity in male and female. But yes, a clear difference is there between the urban and rural areas. In fact, mortality rate. So what is that showing? It is showing that the healthcare facilities in the rural areas uh, is a weak point of India where we need to work. Okay. Plus, awareness also play a major role here. Majority of the people do not prefer to go to the healthcare facilities. They think that domestic remedies, uh, homemade remedies, will cure the diseases of the child, and that is why they do not go to the hospitals or healthcare facilities in time, and that results in death in ma uh, death many times. Okay. I'm not saying that it happens always, but in many cases. This is also a scenario. So awareness also play a very major role. Now comes the neonatal mortality rate, the very newborn baby's mortality rate. So here it is 20 per thousand live births in 2020 in comparison to 2022. So you can clearly see that we have witnessed a decline, although it is not very great how, because we are taking the time period of just one year. Okay, but still it is significant. Then the urban areas NMR is 12, the rural areas NMR is 23. So again, it is also higher in the rural areas. And despite having all the facilities in the urban areas, it is still at 12. That shows that awareness is lacking plus access to the healthcare facilities is also something that we all need to work upon. Affordability is one another thing. Uh, is another thing that needs the attention of the government because majority of the times the healthcare expenditure goes out of the pocket which an average man cannot afford. So that is something we need to work upon. Now on that note, can any one of you suggest me certain measures to improve this scenario in India? Because that can be a descriptive question in your ESI paper. So why not discuss your points in the comment section here and now only? So tell me your opinions on this in the comments. Now let's discuss about the performance of states as well. So six states and UTs have uh, attained the SDG target of neonatal mortality rate, which is equal to 12% uh, okay? by 2030. So Kerala has four, Delhi has nine, Tamil Nadu has nine, Maharashtra has 11, Jammu Kashmir has 12 and Punjab has 12. So what is the SDG target? SDG target is to have 12 mortalities per thousand live births as far as the NMR is concerned. And we have seen six states performing or you can say achieving that target. And out of these six states, Kerala is the best performer. Only four, uh, you can say NMR is recorded per thousand live births. So that's a very good achievement. Then Delhi and Tamil Nadu are at the same level. Coming to the under 5 mortality rate, which is according to the sustainable development goal should be equal to 25 by 2030. So that's the goal. And 11 states in India have attained that goal. So here you can see again, Kerala is the first. Okay. Then we have Tamil Nadu at 13, Delhi 14, Maharashtra 18, Jammu Kashmir 17, Karnataka, Punjab, West Bengal, Telangana, Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh not important for all of you to remember all these states and their ratios. The, if you belong to any of these states then it is important for you to remember the under 5 mortality rate of your state plus the outperformer, okay, the best performer that is important for you to remember. Apart from this I don't think that the, this much data is required from you in your RBSRB or Navadi exam. So that was the highlight of the report. Now let's move on to the next question. Recently, the 10th IBSA Dialogue Forum meeting took place in New York. Which country is the incumbent chair of IBSA? Incumbent means the present chair. So which country is it? It is India. Now guys, 
I hope all of you are aware of the full form of IBSA. It is India, Brazil, and South Africa. Okay. So it is a trilateral dialogue forum, and you can clearly see that two countries are missing, which are a part of the BRICS. Uh, forum as well okay so brics is a group of five countries brazil russia india china and south africa here we have the brazil india and south africa now there is one more commonality in these three countries apart from being the member of the brics that commonality is that all of them are somewhere democratic uh, forms of government okay whereas china and russia both of them uh, are the communist forms of governments so that is the distinction and uh, however that distinction does not have anything to do with this trilateral ministerial conference or commission it is just a fact that i mentioned now coming back to this news so, so the meeting the 10th edition of this meeting took place in new york okay now apart from this during the meeting the highlight was the ibsa fund what is this fund this fund is basically for the south south cooperation so it helps the other developing nations and the least developed nations in their infrastructure and social development project so i hope all of you remember what south south cooperation is i have taught you it some days back i hope all of you remember it okay Tri south south cooperation and triangular cooperation so this ibsa fund has already allocated over 44 million dollars for the development of social infrastructure in the 39 south south cooperation development projects across 35 countries okay and the majority of these 35 countries are the least developed countries so india is the incumbent chair of the ibsc and india is going to host the ibsc summit during the g20 summit not during but on the sidelines of the g20 summit in november 2022 okay on that note tell me who is the sorry which country is the chair chair uh, which country is the chair of brics in 2023 next question is with which company has electronic sector skill council of india signed an mou to empower the youth with industry relevant skills in emerging technology domains to enhance their employability under the skill india initiative so it is nothing but the public private partnership wherein they are trying to achieve the goals of skill india initiative so which organization it is it is samsung india they the samsung india and the electronics sector skills uh, electronics sector skill council of india both of these organizations have collaboratively launched a product or you can say a campaign which is named as samsung innovation campus so that's the name okay and with the help of this name you can easily remember the companies associated with this initiative however the other way around this question can be framed is that the samsung innovation campus or the uh, initiative is aimed at providing skills to the youth in partnership with which of the following government organization so then the question would be on this organization so you need to remember the both of the partners in this initiative now let's discuss the news the news in itself does not have much to discuss it's a very easy news that uh, two organizations have come together they have signed an mou to empower the youth by providing them the skill training so that they become industry relevant and their employability increases one important fact here is that it is being done under the skill india initiative and it is your responsibility to cover this flagship initiative it is very very important okay the program is samsung innovation campus it will upskill the 3000 unemployed youth from 18 to 25 years of age by providing them information about the technology by training them in certain technologies like artificial intelligence internet of things big data and coding etc etc next is that classroom and online training both are going to be available to the people enrolling in this samsung innovation campus apart from this the program will be executed by this electronic sector skill council of india which is the national skill development corporations organization so this organization is administering this electronic sector skill council of india so do remember it is the parent organization you can say of this organization
coming to the next question the agriculture and processed food products export authority apida has facilitated the export of the first consignment of plant based meat products under the vegan food category from nadia din khera district in gujarat to california us in india every export product is quality assured before sending to the other country how many quality testing labs are recognized by apida in india at present so that's the question for you guys so what is the right answer the right answer is 220 now plant based meat it is in itself hilarious and oxymoron how can the meat be plant based but still vegan logo ko bhi kuch chahiye khane ke liye so this is the new product okay which is not exactly new because uh, in many countries such practices are already there where they derive uh, meat like taste from the plant based products okay so coming to this news what has happened the consignment of the plant based meat products has been sent from gujarat to us that's the news now fr uh, from this news what you need to remember one thing is that uh, apida is planning to spread this vegan food vegan meat food to other countries theek okay, hai it's a very interesting name vegan meat food okay so these foods will be sent to other countries and right now apida is planning to do that okay now apart from this 220 quality testing labs are there and you all must be aware of this fact that exported products need to be quality assured otherwise they won't survive the international market and they would come back many a times our agricultural products have faced this discrimination or you can say this test and they have failed because of the high fertilizer content and the chemicals inside the plant or the product okay so that is why the quality standards are very high for the products which are sent to the international markets and that is why apida has set up these labs so that our exports are boosted and the quality is also enhanced next question is who is the first uh, sorry where is the first of its kind avalanche uh, monitoring radar established so guys it is established in north sikkim okay now what is it it is basically a radar which is going to estimate avalanche okay so it has been established by indian army with defense geo informatics and research establishment and i have already told you the location now it is going to predict the avalanches in 3 seconds of their triggering and it will definitely help in mobilizing troops and civilians from the surrounding area where avalanche is predicted okay so it is linked to an alarm system enabling automatic control and warning measures in the case of in case an avalanche is triggered so that is all and i don't think that you have to remember all of these things because these are very basic in nature you can understand it and keep it in your mind three words are important that you need to remember first is indian army and this defense geo informatics and research establishment second is this it is the first avalanche monitoring data okay and third is this north sikkim okay so the location the name of the product and the organizations which have developed the product okay so that is important apart from this this is just for your understanding the next question is which country does the gabriel fifth anti ship missile system belong to so here guys the right answer is israel who is the current prime minister of israel this is your question as well as who is the israeli ambassador to india that is also your question you are going to tell me so israeli navy has completed the test of gabriel fifth anti ship missile system in august this is the first anti ship missile test from the sar 6 corvette of the israeli navy it is a surface to surface missile which is also known as blue spear or an am that is advanced naval attack missile now what should you remember from this news obviously there is nothing much to understand here so there are keywords that you need to pick out from it okay first keyword is israel second is this gabriel fifth anti ship missile and third is this sar 6 corvette fourth is this blue spear and an am okay so these are the four keywords from this news that you need to remember israel gabriel fifth anti ship missile sar corvette 
blue sphere and this anr and remember blue sphere is the alternate name of this gabriel fifth missile okay so that is all just remember this much apart from this everything else is not important for you to memorize now the next question is how much is the annual foreign direct investment in 2021 to 2022 as per the latest data of the ministry of commerce and industry so here understand this point before telling you the answer of this question let me clarify two types of reports are there first is released by unc tad which is your world investment report it also states the fdi outflow and inflow in the country okay and overall the F, uh, fdi flow across the world next report is by the ministry of commerce now it is not a official report it is just the data released by the ministry of commerce now which data is more important however yahan par mere opinion mein dono hi data is bahut important hai because one is released by unc tad where wherein it is telling about the global flows as well as indian outflows or and inflows and secondly it releases the data much more earlier than the ministry of commerce and industry okay that is why it is important and this is our own ministry so obviously we are going to rely on it as well we have to remember this data as well so clearly you need to remember both the data and here the plus point for you is that the difference between the amounts which this organization states and this organization state is not very much okay the difference is very slight okay so you can remember both the amounts very easily because it revolves around 80 billion or something as of now okay in india now as per this report the fdi investment in 2021 to 2022 stands at 83.6 billion okay as per the latest world investment report how much fdi inflow did india have this is your question do tell now as far as this report is concerned or data so we have 83.6 billion worth of uh foreign di direct investment in 2021 to 2022 so inflows stood at 45.15 billion in 2014 to uh, 15 and clearly you can see the increment it has almost doubled now guys the fdi has come from 101 countries which has invested across 31 states and uts and 57 sectors in the country so this is clear this is a clear evidence of india's uh, you can say economic openness okay right now we are uh, allowing more than more uh, investments in india at the same time we are also trying to push our own industry so that it can stand on its own feet but that does not mean that we are moving towards protectionism because if that had been the dream this would not be possible okay coming to the news again so india is planning to attract 100 billion dollar fdi in the current financial year and this is i would say a double star statement a very important statement you can expect it in your esi one marker okay so do remember although the entire news was very much important now the next question is which company has launched a term insurance plan named click to protect super so it is hdfc life insurance plan now guys click to protect super is the new initiative of this life insurance company and nowadays in order to survive in the market the insurance companies are launching their new products but one new trend i have observed in the products nowadays the products are customizable so the consumers have been given this opportunity to choose the facilities or the features in their plan permissible by the company of course but still this option is there that we can customize our life insurance and term insurance plan and this is the novelty in the insurance sector that we have been searching for so that is the new trend i have observed so similarly this plan also uh, allow the customization by the customers okay so you only pay for the benefits and the plan option that you have chosen so that is the very big i would say a uh, revolution not exactly revolution but a very big a good opportunity for the consumers now guys this click to protect super is a non link non participating individual pure risk premium saving life insurance plan okay you must have often heard about non link non participating insurance plan but have you ever wondered what does it mean if 
you hadn't paid attention to that now this is the time you should pay attention to it search for it what does it mean if if you don't understand it do tell me i'm going to take this question in the next video and explain it in detail what does the non linked and non participating plan mean so this is the homework i'm giving you do search it out guys this is important for your understanding as well moving ahead who has been appointed as a director general of the indian council of medical research so here guys rajiv behel is the right so he has been appointed as the director general of icmr and the secretary in the department of health research in the ministry of health and family welfare one more appointment has taken place which is of m shrinivasan who is the new director of aims delhi now guys aims delhi is very very important because i hope all of you must have heard about raju shrivastav the famous comedian who passed away unfortunately some days back so for the first time vitropsy was conducted what is vitropsy it is virtual autopsy okay here the dissection of the body is not needed instead we use the high tech x rays to uh, look into the body and detect the exact cause of death so that is vitropsy so that was conducted on raju shrivastav and guys here my intention behind telling you this is that in entire south asia as well as southeast asia aims delhi is the only institution conducting this vitropsy so that makes it all the more important and a very uh, you can say prominent institution in the entire subcontinent so that is important the next question is who has been elected as the president of the indian newspaper society so it is k raja prasad reddy who is the uh reporter who is working in the telugu daily sakshi apart from this nothing is important here so here guys this video ends i hope you have enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching it